Well, we're LGBTQ+, and that can only mean one thing. Broadway. What did you think I was going to say? Today we visit with BroadwayWorld.com's Performer of the Year, Anne Hampton Calloway. Uh, we welcome all of our viewers to Unapologetically Queer. I'm your host, Al Ferguson, and I am proud to talk to some of the most interesting people that are interesting to our LGBTQ plus community. On June 3rd, Anne Hampton Calloway will uh, be at Sunshine Cathedral for uh, Performing Arts Center here in Fort Lauderdale to launch the Pride Month entertainment series here in South Florida. And Hampton uh, Calloway is, as you know, one of the leading champions of the Great American Songbook, having made her mark as a singer, pianist, composer, lyricist, arranger, actress, educator, a TV host, and a producer. She is best known for her Tony-nominated performance in the hit Broadway musical Swing and for writing and singing the theme song to the hit television series The Nanny. Calloway is a platinum award-winning writer whose songs are featured on seven of Barbara Streisand's uh, CDs. She garnered two BroadwayWorld.com awards including the prestigious Cabaret Performer of the Year Award and the Mac Award for Show of the Year. So welcome, uh, Anne Hampton Calloway. We are very excited to have you here. I'm a gay man, after all, Broadway. Uh, I'm very excited. Uh, I understand, get it right off the uh, out of the gate, that you are unapologetically queer. I am very proud to be queer, and I'm very proud that my beautiful wife, Kari Strand, will be joining me uh, when we are uh, going to be together celebrating Pride on June 3rd. And there will be a reception after my show so that we can see all our sisters and brothers and have a wonderful time feeling happy about our world. It's, it's going to be for, great. For a little period of time. <laughs> <laughs> exactly right. Um, uh, <laughs> Well, first off, I, before we get into uh, the concert that you're doing here for uh, Pride, I want to talk about something that's near and dear to every certainly gay man's heart, and that is your love of Broadway. Where did that come from, from your seat? Why did you gravitate toward that? Well, I think, you know, when you're a person born in a musical family and you're exposed to some of the greatest music uh around. My mom was a singer, pianist, and a voice teacher. And my dad was a huge lover of all kinds of music, uh, one of the reasons why I sing jazz. But um, they had an incredible record collection, and we listened to all the greatest singers and, and show scores, and uh, we went to all the, the big movie openings of the big movie musicals when I was growing up in Chicago. And then when I uh, moved to New York with my family at 10, we started seeing Broadway shows, and that was a big thrill. And my sister and I both were just enthralled um, by the great lyrics and music and the stories and the characters. And and I think it was just something so natural, as I like to call it, we had designer genes. Yeah, designer genes, that's great. I, uh, I was, I've told a number of people about interviewing you and, and, and people have told me, oh, you, you've got to watch this. And, and they had different kinds of uh, things that they were excited about. Uh, and uh, one of my friends said, oh, she did this thing with Liza Minnelli. And I, I went back into YouTube and I found it and it was fabulous. I love Liza Minnelli. And uh, I want to show you uh, just a bit of that moment with Liza Minnelli. Uh, 
You know, there are gay men all over America whose minds are exploding right now. What was that like <laughs> to do an iconic song like that and, and do it with Liza Minnelli? What was that like? Well, I've been friends with Liza Minnelli since 1991, and uh, we met at a party, and we had the best time getting to know each other. And I went to a number of her parties in New York at her home, and it was always a thrill and a joy singing with her and um, meeting all her incredibly talented friends and opening up a world to me of having been a huge fan of her mother, Judy Garland, and practicing Judaism every day of my life. Um, Liza Minnelli is, just blows my mind as, a, as an artist. I got to sit in the front row next to Barishnikov in her opening night at Radio, Radio City Music Hall. And so when I was putting together a, a TV pilot for a show I was wanting to develop called Singer Spotlight, she was the first person I wanted to go, and I was so happy she said yes. Yeah. And uh, it really, it was thrilled the audience to uh, to get to really get to know her as a as a woman as an artist as a daughter of, of theater royalty and she remains one of my dear friends yeah and it, it's a beautiful moment uh she's an icon uh, she's iconic for our community and her voice support her mother is the literal representation of the rainbow of the lgbtq community and your incredibly fabulous voice in that moment was uh, just wonderful um many people uh, know you uh, about your tony nomination for swing and uh, every gay man wants to go to the tonys now uh your tony nomination is important okay it's important but really what we all want to know is what's it like to be at the Tonys? <laughs> well, it's it's pretty damn exciting. Um, it was that year we had um, Rosie O'Donnell was hosting, I believe. It was Nathan Lane or Rosie O'Donnell. It was, there were so many wonderful, exciting people. And it, it's really sort of Cinderella goes to the ball night and everyone looks fabulous. We're all excited, nervous. And you, that little girl or little boy dream is, is coming true. And even if you don't win, you still feel, feel pretty wonderful getting to perform on the show and, and to see all the legends that inspired you to be the artist that you are. And so I love looking around the audience and seeing people who really, you know, made me want to do what I do. And, and to be validated by being a Tony nominee, as my sister Liz Calloway is, uh, it's it's very nice to have that acknowledgement in the community. And one of these days, I'm going to write a Broadway musical. That is one of my bucket list uh, goals, and I'm going to try to do that in the, the next five years. So, oh. you, you give me a perfect segue <laughs> to set up you as a lyricist and 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 writer. Um, a lot of people probably don't make the immediate connection to to Anne Hampton Calloway uh, and and Fran Drescher, uh, and our you know it's one of the beloved television sitcoms in in gay men's history, and that is the Nanny. And before we talk about that, let me show you a bit of that because you wrote uh, the theme song as lyricist. <laughs> She was working in a bridal shop in Flushing, Queens Till her boyfriend kicked her out in one of those crushing scenes What was she to do? Where was she to go? She was out on her fanny So over the bridge from Flushing to the Sheffield's door She was there to sell makeup, but the father saw more She had style, she had flair, she was there That's how she became the nanny Who would have guessed that the girl we described Was just exactly what the doctor prescribed Now the father finds her beguiling Watch out, CC that is lovely and and of course uh that that voice uh, it sounds so familiar to me um, um I'm trying to yes i got this thing on that in my my accountant still calls it my finest work to date <laughs> Tell me how that happened. First off, uh, you know, uh, such an accomplished uh, performer, singer, uh, but uh, to be a lyricist to the degree of, of, uh, of uh, a sitcom opening, you know, not so much today, but once upon a time, uh, the opening of a sitcom was the icon anchor. You, the show was going to live and die on the opening, Friends and 
you know, so many other right. uh, related uh, songs. Tell me how that happened. How did you, how did you fall into, um, you know, I'm going to write this? Well, it's a great story. Um, I was doing a show in New York City at Don't Tell Mama's, a famous cabaret there, famous. and who, and it was all songs. And my my wonderful sister's friend, co-star, she was in the show Baby. He brought um, Todd Graff brought Fran Drescher, who was one of his best friends, to see my show. Afterwards, she came up to me in that inimitable voice and said, "Oh my God, you are so talented! I have to work with you. We have to create things together." So I started writing uh, theme songs for her pilots and various shows she was trying to get launched. And none of them went anywhere. And then finally she called me up and said, I, I have a, a sitcom that I think is going places. It's you know going to be on TriStar. And, but this time I'm not giving the job to you. I'm letting you compete with some of the top Hollywood songwriters. So I thought, oh my goodness, I wrote two theme songs to be more competitive. And I called her up and I said, I want from the, you know, the horse's mouth, what do you want me to say in the song? Who is Fran Fine? And so during our conversation, she said the most wonderful thing. She said, I said, in a nutshell, who's your character? And she paused and then she said, well, you know, um, she's the lady in red when everyone else is wearing tan. <laughs> And I just, um, I just thought, okay, that has to be in the theme song. And so not only did I beat out all the other Hollywood writers, but then I said, you know, you should have the Manhattan transfer record the song. And she said, no, I want you. And so that is why my sister and I, uh, we like to call it our, our, the medley of our hit. And wherever we perform, we usually <laughs> do that theme song. And I will be doing that so we can have a big gay sing-along on our Pride celebration. Yeah, so you, you're going to perform it June 3rd. Yes, I am. Of oh, course. that's uh, of course. That's uh, that's uh, lovely. And you don't do anything. You don't get your gay card. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wait, and, and and wait. You beat me to the joke. Obviously, um, uh, the 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 issue of Fran Je uh, Drescher uh, and her life, of course, uh, and her embracement of LGBT, but the 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 sitcom itself has been considered basically um, a joke, uh, you know, a, a positive, good joke about... Uh, it's very LG campy. Yeah. It, it's, it's so campy and it's so gay. And and part of it is her clothing. her clothing. She looks slightly like a drag queen. You know, she has... I, I, that slightly. <laughs> we, you know, we're, we're facing... Uh, we're, yeah, we're facing... Uh, we're broadcasting as... Uh, we're broadcasting the Snowball Pride uh, here in uh, South Florida on June 17th, and Fran Dresser probably couldn't ride one of the floats with Governor DeSantis's new drag band because it probably would violate <laughs> the, the drag standards that he's trying to enforce. But uh, uh, yeah. the one last question about uh, this experience and 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 writing, uh, and you talk about this in writing a show. Do you find that the writing process is harder or? uh more interesting to you than than the performance aspect that you've had for your entire life which is which do you like better which is harder and which do you like better well singing comes very naturally to me but songwriting gives me a certain personal fulfillment because i get to show the world through my eyes and i love the challenge of writing a good song and i love the challenge of making up songs on the spot which i'll be doing in my performance on june 3rd um but i I, I feel sort of an ironic division in myself. I'm a Gemini, so that means, um, you know, when you marry Gemini, you marry Haram, my lucky wife. But um, so I love to have the opportunity to do bo both singing and songwriting. And that <clears throat> makes my upcoming project, which is called Finding Beauty Originals Volume 1. It'll be 16 of my original songs out coming out September 22nd, where both talents are featured in, in full bloom. And um, and next month I get to go to Washington DC and receive an unexpected award. I've just been inducted into the uh, female, the Women's Songwriter Hall of Fame. Oh, and um, awesome. people know I've written about 500 songs. So it's, it's a tremendous honor. And, and 
I think this is where I want to take my life going forward is to, to do more writing, to do more singing of my writing and to write interesting projects like yeah. And uh, to be clear, I knew uh, you had a new album uh, coming. The new album is all going to be all original work. Uh, uh, yes, but my current CD out, it just came out in February, is uh, it's and I'm telling you this to you on Peggy Lee's birthday. It's yeah. called Fever, uh, a celebration of Peggy Lee, and that's been doing great, getting great Spotify numbers, great, great uh, w unanimous rave reviews. And she was the first famous female singer songwriter. And so she is why I can do what I do today. She really uh, blazed the trail for all of us. You know, um, and I, I, when you say that about her being the first, I'm, I'm curious, I wasn't planning to ask you, but uh, what do you think about Dolly Parton in terms of, of her uh, singer songwriter? I think she's incredible. I, I love Dolly Parton. I'm not usually a huge fan of country music, but I think her her spirit, her soul, her attitude, her love, her her talent just shines whatever she does. And uh, I couldn't say more wonderful things about her. I'd love to meet her and I'd love to do something with her. Yeah. Um, I, I also wanted to ask you about um, your storied career and people that you've worked with and performed with. Uh, I, uh, I saw an excerpt from uh, Wynton Marsalis at Lincoln Center. Uh, you've uh, performed at Boston Pops at Tanglewood, which is legendary Carnegie Hall, of course. If you could only choose a single person uh, and or perhaps a single genre, would it be Broadway or would it be concerts? Which do you like better? The scripted opportunity at Broadway and Broadway musical, or or his concert, uh, your greater presence. Well, I've I've, spent, I've only done one Broadway musical, and so I've spent my life doing concerts. And what I love about doing concerts is that I get to create my own show. I get to uh, write songs for them. I get to arrange songs for them. I get to craft them. Uh, I can choose who I sing with. I can do a one woman show. I can do it with my trio. I can do it with a big band. I can sing with an orchestra. I can just express what I want to, what I care about and what matters to me in concerts. Um, but all that, all that aside, I love Broadway and I, I love, I would love to be, do another Broadway musical if it was the right one. And um, the idea of, of writing and really creating a, an amazing show that, that moves me the way Sondheim musicals move me or many of the other great musicals, uh, that would be a tremendous challenge and a tremendous thrill. But concerts is, is the world of concerts uh, is where my magic really comes into full bloom. And when I was starring in the musical Swing, I got to create my own role. I got to choose my songs, arrange them, write new lyrics for them. And uh, I did, when I arrived on my first day of work at Swing, they hadn't cho chosen anything for my character. I wrote my entire character. And wow, I so it was read that. So in a way, when I did that show, it was, yeah, it was that's, fun. Yeah, that's super interesting. All of, I'm curious, uh, all of the people that you've worked with, you've sang with, if you were forced into uh, choosing a single favorite <laughs> moment, who would it be? Well, I, I have to say I really love singing with my sister. You know, I, I've, I've sung with so many famous people. I stu stood next to one of my favorite singer-songwriters, Stevie Wonder, in Washington, D.C., an incredible time. But Liz and I, um, we have a magic that really can't compare to anything else because we grew up together, we have the same genes, we have the same sense of humor, we're so different. But uh, I'm, I'm speaking to you from Palm Springs, where tonight we're opening our show Broadway to Callaway. And um, we just we just love singing together and the harmonies and the you know the wonderful rapport we have together because we've known each other our whole life um someday i want to sing with barbara streisand i know it's a pipe dream but i want to stand in the same room and sing with her and do something special but yeah. it would be hard to top singing with my sister i'm i'm curious when you say that about your sister are you uh, uh are you still uh, like in in your new uh show that you're doing are you doing for good from wicked with her yes we are Yes, yeah. we're closing the show. With I, the purple I, I just tell everybody, let me spill the beans. Uh, go to YouTube. You know, first off, you want to go to her concert and, and see it live. Um, but uh, if you do not have the ability to do that, go to YouTube and see um, Anne Hampton Calloway perform with her sister for good. It is literally, it is breathtaking. It is just oh, so, thank you so much. Beautiful.
Um, in all of the work that you've done, anyone just completely that you met, you were completely starstruck over? Uh, I I can talk to anybody. I've I've spoken to presidents. I've spoken to all kinds of famous people. But Barbara Streisand, who I've done the most work with as a songwriter, I have three platinum hits on seven of our CDs. And but uh, you know, there's something about her that I just get sort of tongue tied. Like I try to act really calm around her. And I've written patter for her. I've been on the phone with her. I performed for her when she won. The Chapman Award for film, and I made up a song about her in front of her. But when I speak to her, I just <laughs> feel like, oh my God, it's her, you know. And, and I don't know why. But everybody else, I'm fine. I could talk to anybody. But there's you know, something it gives me a, a perfect transition. Deep, yeah. I, it mm -hmm. gives me a perfect transition observation to talk about you as a, a lesbian, a queer woman. I love Barbara Streisand. I've seen her in concert twice. The one thing that I have read volumes on of why she's disliked is because I personally think it's because she represents as a woman a complete decision maker. She's completely in charge. She knows completely what she wants and she requires it of everyone around her. Um, I'm curious from your standpoint of your career as a lesbian queer uh, woman, uh, does it affect the way you craft uh, your art in any way? Does it, does it come into play being a, a strong uh, woman um, in terms of lyrics, uh, choice, performance in any way? I think growing up, um, I grew up bisexual. I was confused because I was attracted to men, but I only fell in love with women. And it was, it made me a very um, introspective person, try to understand how, why am I this way? And I don't know, I don't see anybody else who's like me. What is life about? What is love? What are, I, I asked so many questions when I was a kid and I continue to ask those questions. And then I, I felt afraid for a while, you know, how am I going to have a good career and be who I am? And, you know, through the years, I, I opened my life and my heart up and I just, you know, i I'm fortunately been sharing my life with somebody who is happy to be out loud and proud and we share our lives every single day very, very uh, openly and with joy. Um, but when I'm making decisions as an, as an artist and as a person, it's very important to be true to myself and to be to whatever it is that I do to do it with love and to do it with how can this be the most loving decision? How can this be, how can I be in a state with the most open heart, the most focused mind, and the most um, loving, uh, fun, unique, authentic me that I can be every single day? And so I'm glad that I'm at a point in my life, I have a birthday coming up, and I'm glad I'm at the point in my life where I am so happy to be who I am. I am, and I want my life to be an inspiration to other people now that I've arrived at this difficult moment, because it's not easy to be who you are in a world. There are so many people who, for some unknown reason, don't want to be let people be who they are, you know. It, it's, authentic. Uh, yeah, authentic. And to me, your, your health is destroyed if you're not you. Your happiness is destroyed if you're not you. The world is less of a world if you're not you. And the most we can do is to be, have the courage and the cooperation with each other to help each other be our authentic, joyful selves. And so that's why pride is so important, is to be able to celebrate the courageous world that helped us to be who we are and to feel free to be who we are. And uh, I'm just, I, I thank the people who paved the way and our work is not done. Not so when I write songs for gay choruses and try to express the experience of what we go through and how it feels to be us, um, I hope I'm doing my part in helping just there to be more human rights and, and more happiness. And I want to ask you uh, quickly about your parents. Uh, uh, were they supportive of you? Uh, the exploration of your queerness? Uh, were they always supportive of that? <laughs> well, when I told my mom about my falling in love with my first love, she said, well, you know, I just met a woman and she found her love when she was 60. And I said, Mom, I'm 21. I really don't, or 23, I think it was. I don't want to wait that long. I'm really happy. <laughs> so my mother, 
And yet she became a voice teacher to no untold numbers of gay students who she absolutely loved and adored. My dad, when I was breaking up with that partner, and I, I said who I was looking for, and I wasn't sure, was there, could it be a man? And I said, I want somebody who's this and that and blah, blah, blah. And he said, Anne, I hope you realize that you're ruling out nice out of men. And I said, Dad, I hope you realize that too. <laughs> <laughs> That's great, and and I, I, in the end, they were they were very supportive. Just just to make a long story, and and then they they. Um Two viewers that anyway. uh, are getting to know Anne Hampton uh, Calloway. Uh, both of her parents are of note uh, themselves. Anne's father was a, Chicago's legendary TV and radio journalist, John Calloway. Uh, her mother was Shirley Calloway, a very superb singer, pianist, and one of New York's most in-demand vocal coaches. Uh, we broadcast Queer News Tonight live every evening. So I gravitated toward that because of his news background in Chicago. I'm just curious when uh, when today we have Queer News Tonight and it's an a, uh, it's an evening daily news show about queer America. What would your father think about that in his days of uh, being a journalist, television journalism? What what would he think about? Wait, there's queer news and there's a queer television <laughs> news show. What I would he think? He think? Would be, I think he would think it was wonderful. You know, he everybody needs to tell their story. And some stories are not told in the evening news. In fact, a lot of news is about one thing, you know, one person, one story. The evening news is not what the evening news used to be, where you'd hear a lot about the world. You are telling very important stories, and they need to be heard. And, um, and people who feel not listened to and not appreciated and not validated by, by the world of news are should we should all feel so grateful for what you're doing because otherwise we're not we're not going to have our stories told it really is amazing how little is talked about unless it is from a gay you know and thank you for that uh, and it's a wonderful segue to june pride month and 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 hampton calloway's uh, concert uh, June 3rd that is going to kick off uh, Pride Month here in uh, South Florida. As everyone knows, uh, South Florida is one of the largest LGBT uh, communities uh, in the country. An estimated 380,000 LGBT live in the metro uh, of South Florida. Anne's uh, concert is called Love and uh, let love a pride celebration it's june 3rd here at sunshine uh, cathedral's uh, performing arts center uh, and uh, kind of summarize what kinds of things we can expect in coming to uh, your concert and uh, uh, what will you be doing well uh, the title of the show is called love and let love and that is an anthem i wrote with my dear friend michelle brauerman and it is a very joyous uh lesbian gay pride song and it's it's uh, going to be on my new cd and i wanted to make sure that that song is out there and that it's the kind of song that makes you just want to sing along and be proud and feel inspired so that's going to be one of the many songs i'm going to be do, doing some famous you know gay icon tributes um Bar barbara streisand and a few others and i'm going to be doing uh, songs by famous gay composers, and um, I'm going to be doing uh, some of the songs from my career that I think has reached my most amount of gay followers. That that is part of my why I'm in the musical community that I'm in, and it's going to be uh, fun to make up a pride uh, song at the end of my show. I ask the audience for words and phrases, and um, compose a song on the spot. So we're going to have a pride moment like that. And then I'm going to close the show with the anthem uh, by the great Judy Garland. There is uh, nothing more thrilling than singing over the rainbow a cappella to close my show. And yeah. so whenever I do this, it's, it's just one of those tingling moments of, of beauty that she gave us. And her, her presence as a part of the gay movement has been so important. And so that is how I'm going to close a very joyous and beautiful evening. You know, and I'm getting goosebumps even thinking about you doing that. Well, the choice of doing uh, Over the Rainbow a cappella, why, why that choice? Because it's the most beautiful way to sing it. And I've sung it with symphony orchestras. I've sung it with my trio. I've played the piano and sung it, but when I stand in the center 
and people just hear my voice and they just hear the power of the words and they feel all the beauty of the music and the memories that that song evokes. There's just something sublime about the experience that I can't describe. Yeah. Love and Let Love, a Pride Celebration concert, June 3rd, Sunshine Cathedral, uh, and it's at uh, the Performing Arts Center. Um, your ticket goes for good because it helps support uh, the Sunshine Mission in so many ways, especially the Food Mission Program here in South Florida. So it's not to miss. Uh, get your tickets uh, right now, and it's a perfect way uh, to help celebrate and launch June Pride Month. Um, you can right. read lots more. Uh, about uh, Ann Hampton Calloway at her website, AnnHamptonCalloway.com. She has <laughs> lots of great things in social uh, media, and uh, it's um, it's uh, been a and pleasure. A YouTube channel with full of all kinds of things on my with YouTube full channel. Full of things. Uh, as I said, I uh, I fell into uh, the uh, the. Uh, um, uh, the Liza Minnelli piece that we showed you from yeah. uh, from YouTube and so much more. There's so much to uh, to see. It's really going to be a, a great uh, concert. And uh, Anne Hampton uh, Calloway, we really, really appreciate the time and you coming to support uh, this LGBT Pride Month concert here in South Florida. We look forward uh, to uh, meeting and seeing you. And we thank you very much for being on tonight's you, uh, Queer News tonight. It's an honor to be on your show. I'm, I'm so uh, thrilled at what you're doing and continued success to you. Thank you.